tuned into Calsoscoped. YouTube, what's going on? It's Calsoscope back with another video. And in today's video, you're going to be understanding gradient maps, but more so creating a skin just from using a little bit of camera raw and gradient maps. So this one's going to be good for you guys if you guys kind of are struggling with gradient maps or don't really understand them. But I'll tell you guys the basis of it and we'll just make a pretty cool skin of this James Harden mask that we have right here. But first, make sure you guys pay the fee of one like and consider subscribing to the channel if this video helps. So without further ado, let's hop into it. All right, guys, let's not waste any time. Let's get right to it. So the first thing that you want to do is obviously get your mask. If you don't have the mask, then you're going to need to learn how to use the pen tool or use select subject. I believe I use select subject on this because it just worked really well. Um, if I disable this layer mask here, you'll see the background. And yeah, I just use select subject and it worked pretty well on this. But um, in most cases, you're going to have to use a pen tool. And then for beards like this and stuff like that, a big tip is using something like a, uh, what did I, I used a grass brush here. So if you guys don't have like grass brushes or anything like that, try to get some grass brushes and like this just works really well for hair. Obviously that's just random, but go on the outside edges and it works really well for hair. Just find the right grass brush. Okay. So that's the first thing. Um, just learn how to mask very well and then use a grass brush to get a pretty good selection. It's not going to be perfect, but get a pretty good selection with that. Now let's take this into camera. Raw. So go to filter camera raw filter. Okay. Second thing I always do now, this skin already looks pretty cool and it's just a nice fit photo overall. You can see like sweat, light, all those types of things, but let's just play around with some things that I usually play around with in camera to enhance my image. So with contrast, I'm actually going to bring it down a little bit because I feel like it's super saturated. Um, could just bring the saturation down, but we'll just bring contrast down highlights. I like having my highlights a little bit blown out. And then shadows, I kind of want to balance it out a little bit. So I'll bring that up. We'll bring shadows up as well. Whites, we can bring down somewhat. And blacks, I'm going to leave it right there. Now, this is all up to you what you want to do with your camera. But this is how I'm feeling, right? So it doesn't have to be something that you have to do. But um, just find a style that you usually like to go with in camera. Um, if you're a poster designer, you probably already have your you probably already have your style, but um, this is just for demonstration demonstration purposes. And then grain, I like to add a little bit of grunge grain, not too much off the bat. So keep it somewhere right around there, and that's all I'm gonna really add for this. Okay. So you see before and after, nothing crazy, but not bad. All right. So now let's go in and let's add our gradient map. All right. So we're going to go to gradient map, click it, boom. And we're going to set our gradient map. You can go to basics or you can change it manually, but here is how gradient maps work. Okay. So what a gradient map does is it, it's kind of manipulate your colors and values depending on where you place the gradient map and where you place the points in the gradient map. So it's always from darkest to, to light unless you want to be unless you want it to be inverted and i mean i guess you could do some invertation stuff i don't even know if that's a word i guess you could invert things but it doesn't look too good like if you go white to black um it just looks inverted like that can be cool for like a sci-fi or something like that but so pretty much everything that you put in between here nothing can be um nothing can be like lighter than your end color like say if we were to put gray here and then we were to put a darker gray or like closer to, to black here that wouldn't work because it'd be inverted so everything leading up to the, the the highest value has to be lighter than your end value this is the end value this is the highest value so everything has to be lighter leading up to that and now to create a nice like cool gray scale skin that you will see a lot of times when people do poster edits just you kind of just have to play around with your subject and build yourself up gradually to this uh, highest value, which is white in this case. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use about three points in between three or four points in between. So this is the first point right here. Just keep an eye gauge of where your points are. So this is the first point right here. Boom. Now I'm going to move a little bit further. I'm going to bring it up one more time. I'm going to bring it up again. I mean. And then I'm going to bring it up once more. Okay. 
So now, I really like that look already. And we have three, three in between here, and I'm gonna put one on this end as well. That's not exactly white. It's a little bit darker than white, okay? So just like that, now we have all these points in between. Now, yeah, you see this right here, I'm gonna zoom up on it. You see this diamond in the middle right here? This shows your feather, okay? So this is gonna show how much feathering you're gonna get from one transition of color, not color, of value in this case, grayscale, to the next value. So if you bring it over here, it's gonna be not a lot of feather and it's gonna be really choppy and blocky. I do kind of like that look sometimes, but in this case, we want it to be a little bit more smooth. So I'm definitely gonna keep it um, more towards the middle to get that nice smooth um, gradient. And you could bring it to the other end as well and it's choppy, but it's the other way. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it in the middle. And now that you guys understand that, what you're gonna have to just do is kind of play around and adjust these sliders to your liking until you come up with something that looks um, just dope to your eye and you really want to use on a gradient map. And you could always click on these and delete them, delete things in between. I just press Control Alt Z to undo it. You could delete them, but yeah, just work this through and you're gonna come up with something that you like. So I'm gonna work on this a little bit and I'm gonna let you guys do the same. Always can change the colors and everything like that in your gradient map. Now I'm seeing the hair looks a little rough, so I'm going in with my grass brush and I'm just cleaning up the hair of the mask. When you're in grayscale, you'll be able to see a lot more um, of your values and just things that look out of place. So that's why, like when you guys see me do manipulations, I always go into grayscale. It's just something that really helps um, as a designer, looking at grayscale. Because value is super important, not color. I would always suggest that you learn values and things like that first before you go into dive into color. All right, so that looks pretty cool to me. This is my gradient map here. I'm gonna share this PSD, so if you guys want to uh, really break down what I did here, that's cool, you can do that. Um, so now, let's just add a couple like nice little touches to this to give it a little bit of our own flair, our own style. So what you can do is just kind of look at the colors that aren't in grayscale on this Brooklyn jersey. And I like to bring these back to life. So I want to bring back this blue. I want to bring back this red, um, yellow, and this color right here. So all we got to do is get to back to our general brushes. Let's get out of the grass brushes. Let's uh, close up this folder. Concept art brush. Let's close that up. And let's go to our hard round brush. All right. Now our brush settings, nothing should be turned on, only smoothing should be turned on. Um, and that's at zero for me right now. So all you would have to do is use your black because make, or yeah. Okay, so you have your gradient map and you have a layer mask and this is white. So white is everything. White reveals black hide. So um, black is going to hide the gradient map. So that will bring back the color. So if we were to use our brush and just brush on the parts that we want to bring back, you see it, it's just like magic it just comes back right everything just comes back and you can check in and see what you're really doing just by using the icon and turning this on and off so now i'm just gonna go in and bring back some of my colors because that's what i like to do on my pieces i like to bring back um, the colors from the piece so i'm gonna take some time and do that and then we'll be back All right, so there we go. I brought back the colors that I wanted to bring back. And now is your time for you to get saucy, right? So obviously the Brooklyn Nets have black trim or like gray, really gray scale trim on the sleeves and things like that. But here's where you can get saucy because you could add another gradient map. And now that you know how a gradient map works, we can actually alterate some of the colors on this jersey um, to our liking. So we're not gonna go crazy and do anything insane, but we're just gonna change the color of this uh trim and this one so i'm gonna add a gradient map and we're gonna go from black to white again now instead of doing grayscale we're gonna add a color in the middle all right and this color i'm going to choose a blue um pretty saturated blue 
but you know we can change it and obviously like we know now we can just move this around and get the right color we want if we add more of the white value sliding this way it's going to be lighter if we add more black value sliding that way it's going to be darker cool right so all you got to do is press ok when you're ready invert the mask okay so press Control i that inverts it invert the mask and now let's just paint with our white brush and bring some value to this grayscale and this is where we can start really getting experimental getting uh getting crazy with what we're doing um what i'm gonna do is i'm just going to i'm just gonna do this really loosely like you see it's not not it's definitely not uh organized or professional yet but we just have to play around with our mask and make sure it looks uh clean when i'm done so i'm just gonna play around with this trim um trying to decide where these trims are too but now see we're just gonna mask these out and i'll be back once i clean up this blue then we're just gonna add a different color we're probably gonna add yellow on the other side of the trim all right All right, so that looks pretty cool. Now we're just going to repeat the process for this. Um, what you could also do, so you guys see, this is really um, looks good. And then this is super dark or super light and just kind of looks like brushed on. Doesn't really look like it's embedded into the jersey. So what I might try is I might press Control J to duplicate my gradient map, right? And then what I'm gonna do from there is I'm gonna make this darker, okay? I'm gonna make this darker and drop the value down a little bit and this is gonna make it look a little bit more realistic just like that all right so maybe try that out duplicate your gradient map there's always so many ways that you're gonna have to deal with things but try that out and this will make it will help it out and then integrate your mask and now color it on once again and it looks a little bit more embedded into the jersey even though we still have those highlights. I'm gonna do the same thing for yellow on the other side of the trim. So I'll just fast forward through this, but yep, same process. So let's do that. Just gonna use the same gradient map and change the hue to yellow, all right. All right, cool. So now we have a sick little mask in design uh, for going forward and making a nice design with. So um, at, yeah, so like at any point you could change the hue if you didn't see it was in the right hue. If you want to make it more orange, that actually might fit the yellow a little bit more if we made it more orange. But you know, anything like that, you could change it. Um, I'm just gonna show you guys a couple more things that you might be able to do or just try out. Uh, so you could go to your mask right here so make sure you're on, I'll just tell you this harden mask. So make sure you're on your harden mask and then you're gonna go to select color range. You can play around with things such as your highlights on here. This would be the range. Fuzziness is like how uh, how much grunge is gonna be on there. So if you have less fuzziness, it's gonna be less grungy. I mean, more fu fuzziness. Jesus Christ. If you have more fuzziness, it's gonna be less grungy. Okay, there you go. And if you have less, yes. Okay, the opposite. So <laughs> you can do that. You can do it for shadows as well. Everything highlighted in white is the shadows and stuff. Um, but let's go ahead and do it with highlights. And let's choose a nice little range here. Just get some highlights on there. All right, that works. Then we're gonna go to the top, add a solid color. Let's add it in white. And I'm gonna make clipping masks. So if you don't know how to make clipping masks, you hold down Alt, or I think it's, is it Option on the Mac, I think? Um, so, and then you just get this little icon, you make a clipping mask, or you can right click and create a clipping mask. It says Release, right click, Create. So that's how you do that. Uh, so yeah, so now we have the highlights and they're really blown out though. So I'm just gonna put this on Soft Light instead. And you see, they're not as blown out, one. And then two, um, two, I don't want them to be 
has vibrant back here. So I'm gonna drop the flow down on my brush and I'm gonna just paint out some highlights just like that. Okay. Maybe even just drop the opacity overall a little bit. Just so we have a nice touch of highlights. All right, guys. Boom. Now, last thing that I shall show you today is just how to make a colored eye. And we'll try that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go in and I'm going to add an exposure layer and bring it up. Okay. Now right click on this exposure layer, go to blending options and drag the slider from here this way. Drag it from the left, the underlying layer like this and get a nice little feather going on. All right. Just like that. Just like that. Okay. Now invert this mask, go back to your brush, change it to white because we're going to reveal, bring your flow up, not too high. Keeping it at 17. Yes. So keep it uh, somewhere around there. And you can't actually do too much on this method. I'll have to make a, a different method and try some things out. But you can't bring it up too much because it starts to get super pixely like that. So don't do that. But we're just going to add a new layer. And we're going to choose like a color that we want his eye to be. I'm going to stick in my blue. So I'm going to go to blue. Boom. Put it on color. I'm going to invert that. And I'm going to brush this in. You don't have to get the pupil. Um, only if it looks like you should. But in most cases, you won't even have to get that. And that could literally be your eye there. I think it looks better when he has like. Probably like yellow eyes or something. Maybe like yellow eyes or something looks a little bit cooler. Um, I don't know. It's up to you. You can change the color. I don't. I don't really care. But it's just something for you to think about going on in your graphic design, your poster design. So, yeah, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for the video. Um, one other thing I will just say is I'm gonna drop this off just cause for right now. Like you just leave that and that looks cool just with the exposure up looks pretty dope to me honestly right so then what if you went you'd have to go on color you know, linear light or something linear dodge yeah you'd have to go linear dodge and then kind of color it in like that and then you get that weird glossy effect that's going on there all right something like that looks pretty sick get that weird glossy effect but yes so the other thing that you could do is just group this all together Control g after you shift uh shift select and then um condense it so i made it into a smart object but you could do anything then rasterize it then we can just work with the dodge and burn tool. Shout out to Ryan Designs for pointing that out. Didn't even think about using the dodge and burn tool once I'm done with my player treatment. Um, bring everything together and just kind of play around with some stuff. So dodge makes your highlights more extreme and burn is going to make your highlights uh, less value. So that's what you need to know about that. This tool here. So you could just touch anything up that you really see fit. Maybe you want to get in the ear here. Maybe you want to highlight a couple points in the beard. Just bring out some highlights, man. Simple. You know, just keep it simple a lot of the times. Nothing too crazy. But with that being said, that's going to do it for the video, guys. You could take this and turn it into a design. Definitely. Um, I'm not going to do that right now, but maybe later on I will or something but like i said that's gonna do it for the video thank you guys for all tuning in and until next time make sure you guys stay scoped share with a friend and hit that subscribe button man hit the like button hit the subscribe button did you pay the fee oh my gosh and do not miss the next video or i will